We are loving and serving like Jesus did at Central Haven Church and pray that this message encourages you to do the same. To get notifications of new content when it's posted, please subscribe to our channel and click the little bell. May God bless you and keep you. James chapter 2. Uh, and, and I got to admit, I, I, as I read through James ch chapter 2 a couple of times, I kept thinking, how many, how many verses, Lord? <laughs> so I read 1 and 2, and I thought, well, we could stop right there. Uh, we could talk about that for quite some time. But uh, God is good, and God always, always leads me. Um, sometimes I go willingly. Sometimes I am in shock of the direction that he's taking me. But uh, we are going to attempt to get through a James chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Um, and if you would, let's, let's pray together that God would speak to us. Father, we, we come, Lord, and we ask you to teach us, to show us, Father God, in your word, whether I, whether I have notes on it or not, Father, we pray that you would teach us, teach us from your heart what it is you would have for us to learn from this letter, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So it's certain, verse 1, James Chapter 2. My brothers, have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory without partiality. For if a man with a gold ring in fine clothing comes into your assembly, and also a poor man in ragged clothing comes in, and you have respect for him who wears the fine clothing, and say to him, sit here in a good place, and say to the poor, stand there, or sit here under my footstool. Have you not then become partial among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers. Has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and drag you before the judgment seats? Do they not blaspheme that worthy name by which you are called? If you fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as sinners. For Whoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of breaking the whole law. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. And as we were talking about this morning, a better translation would be, do not murder. Not if you, now if you do not commit adultery, yet you kill, you have become a lawbreaker. So speak and do so as though who will be judging will be judged by the law of liberty. For he who has shown no mercy will have judgment without mercy. For mercy triumphs over judgment. And there is so much in just those first 13 verses that, that James covers. And, and it's amazing because on the on the uh, surface of that, if you're anything like me, it's like, I would never do that. I would never treat one person this way and one person that way based on what they're wearing. Um, I bet you you would. I bet you you still do. And I bet you when the Holy Spirit reminds you, this will come to mind now. And you'll be like, oh, my goodness, I still do that. Case in point, uh, you ever come across somebody that uh, does not look the part of a Christian? Maybe they're covered in tattoos. Maybe they have 
piercings in parts of their skin that you didn't realize could be pierced? And yet, they ask you, do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? I've had it happen. I've had people that I would have never guessed ask me what I do for a living. It, and you know what? If I'm being honest, I was being partial to them because I did I I would have expected anything other than them to ask me about Jesus. So there's so much that James covers in here, and, and I just want to pull out a couple of things uh, so I don't get lost in all of that, but to just focus on a couple of things. And, and one is to do not show partiality. The second is the law. And the third is the law abiders. So I want to look at those three things. So if we go back to verse 2, uh, James says, My brothers... Have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory without partiality. Do not show partiality. Why? Is it, is it just a good thing to not, to not show that? What well, is a good thing to not show that? But no, this is, this is acting like God. Because God does not show partiality. As a matter of fact, one of the first things that came to my mind, and, and luckily in, in my uh, notes in my Bible, it actually had this Bible verse in there. First James, or First James, First Samuel 16, 7 says, uh, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees, for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And this, of course, was when Samuel was, was, was commanded by God to go to the house of Jesse to look for the new king, the king that was going to take the place of Saul. And he walks in and sees all these handsome, young, strapping-looking men, and he's like, oh, well, this is obviously the one. And he goes through the whole list. And God is like, nope, I didn't pick him either. I didn't pick him either. God looks at the heart. He does not show partiality. Due to appearance, he is, he's after the heart. And he's after a heart that's after him. And it's funny because if you think of, if you think of the, the disciples that Jesus picked, the disciples that Jesus handpicked, um, you would think that all these guys understood that, that God does not show partiality. These guys were Jews. They were raised knowing the stories of David and King Saul. They knew about this when Samuel went. So they, of course, would know that God is not a God of partiality, right? No, no. That's not exactly the people that Jesus chose. And you know I, the, the longer I walk with Christ, the more I am thankful for the disciples. I am so thankful that Jesus picked guys that gave me comfort to know that there's, there's a chance for me to make it into heaven. Because uh, if these guys made it, man, I, I, I think God might be able to use me. Um, no, Jesus did not pick guys that, that understood this. Um, and I think he did it to give, maybe for you too, but definitely for me, to give me confidence that, that God can still work in my life. In Luke uh, 22, starting in verse 24, it describes the disciples not knowing that. Uh, there was also rivalry among them concerning which of them was to be counted the greatest. He said to them, Jesus said, the king's of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. But you are not, but you are not so. Instead, let him who is greatest among you be as the younger, and in the younger being of less stature, uh, of less status. And he who rules as he who serves. 
For he who is greater, he who sits at the table, or he who serves, it is not he who sits at the table. But I am among you as he who serves. The, the rules versus servants is like masters versus slave. And Christ chose not to be one that's served, but he came to serve. He came to show us how to serve. And it still amazes me that God would come and serve man. To think of all of these supervisors that I've had that, that did a good job of displaying that. And that was an, an amazing thing to have people that are above you serve you. Uh, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. This isn't just a king. This is the king of kings. The Lord of lords. I, I understand how Peter must have felt when Jesus wanted to wash his feet. It's like, oh, you will not do that. He didn't understand what he was saying. But the idea of being served by God himself, I understand how amazingly humble you would have to be to allow that to happen. God is a God of order. And God is a God who shows us, by example, uh, what he has called us to. Um, when <clears throat> in Matthew 22, Jesus also uh, shares, when he's asked about uh, what's the greatest commandment, Jesus replies, uh, starting verse 36, uh, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law, and Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it you shall love your neighbors as yourself. On those two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. So, serving shows where your heart is. Serving one another, which is what, what uh, James was alluding to, that uh, when you love your neighbor as yourself, you're serving them. This is, is probably what he had in mind, was Jesus sharing this. And it's amazing to me, you know, every time you look at the words of Jesus, almost every time he was sharing something that was out of the Old Testament. So... Have you ever looked to see where this appears in the Old Testament? I honestly don't recall ever doing that. But God led me to, to that. And it was amazing to find that in Levit Leviticus 19.18, it says, You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. His idea is no impartiality. Of serving one another and loving one another. And it goes way back. It goes way back. And it shows our heart. It really does show our heart. And now I know why I skipped over it because I don't have the address on it. So this reminded me of God not showing any impartiality. We'll see, we'll see how good of scholars you guys are. You guys can help me uh, pull this one out. So verse, verse 28 you are those who have counted me in my trials, and I appoint you as a kingdom, appoint you a kingdom as my Father has appointed me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. 
and sit at the thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. This is the, the last, I got my slides out of order. This is the last part of Jesus talking about, uh, talking to his disciples about who would be the first. And, and uh, he's telling them that you will sit at an honorary seat, but, but uh, Christ is not saying that that shows partiality. What he's saying is, is that you've already been given a place to serve, and in that place, as, uh, as one of the leaders sitting on a throne, you'll still be serving. And Christ actually was, was one who was called out of not having partiality because even in, um, even in Isaiah, Isaiah 53, it says that there would be nothing about him that would attract us to him. There would be nothing that would cause us to pick him out of anyone else. There would be nothing physically that would lead us to believe that he would be the Christ. God does not show partiality in the way that man would. Man, man will always look with the eyes. And when it comes to partiality, It's in our words and our actions. It's in our demeanor. It's in the way that we conduct ourselves. And God shows us that the way that we treat others really shows what's on the inside of us. Romans 13.10 says, Love works no evil to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And I really want to hang on that thought about our words, our actions, and our demeanor. Because you know what? The way that we talk, the way that we act, and the way that our demeanor comes across to others, it, it will, it can and it often does show our heart. But our reactions will always show our heart. Every single time. It will show what is on the inside. It will show if you have God's love. If you have a desire to keep his commandments and his, his law in us. It will show it will show because that love is the fulfillment of the law. Jesus did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And if we have a heart that is striving to have the love of God in us, striving to follow Jesus, then fulfilling God's law would be a a natural desire. If you have him working inside of you, if you have his word working inside of you, if you have the Holy Spirit working inside of you, it's not a command to do that. It's a natural desire. It's a, it's a byproduct, if you will, of, of wanting to. You would want to fulfill anything that God puts on your hearts, anything that God puts before your eyes in his word. And it really does show what's on the inside of us. Uh, Jesus was teaching in Matthew 15. It says, Do you not yet understand that whatever enters at the mouth goes into the stomach and is cast out into the sewer? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile the man. Or they display what you've been putting in to your heart. If it's God's word, if it's God's love, 
that you're putting in, it's God's word and it's God's love that's going to be coming out. Even when, and I say when, not if, even when we make a mistake and we catch ourselves, maybe we are treating somebody in an unworthy manner. Maybe we're treating them differently than we should. But we immediately notice it and correct it. This action shows what's in your heart. This action shows. And you know what's really hard? Is when that person happens to be one of your immediate subordinates. Like a child. Or a grandchild. Or a younger sibling. Somebody who should, in the, in the hierarchy of life, be underneath you. But when you see that you are not following God's law, you're not following God's order by showing impartiality, by being impartial to them, and you notice it and you immediately correct it, ask for forgiveness make the steps to make that right, that reaction shows what's stored up inside of you. It's not pride. It's not, I can do what I want. I get what I, I I can get and have what I want. I can have my cake and eat it too. It's not that. It's, I want to honor God with my actions. I want to honor God with my words and even my thoughts. When God is in you, you you want to abide by his law, his righteousness, his holiness. You want him to flow out of you. There was a a story of a, a young boy was being driven home from sun, from from church on a Sunday morning with his mom, and uh, she's playing Christian music, and uh, the song came out, and I can't remember the name of the song, but the song was uh, explaining how uh, if Jesus is in you, that people should see Jesus, and the little boy's sitting back there, and he's quiet, and he's listening, and he goes, "Mom, in Sunday school this morning they." They said that um, that if we love Jesus, that Jesus lives inside of us. And she goes, that's right. That's true. And he's quiet again. And then finally he says, Mom, Sunday school teacher said that, that God is uh, omni-something. Uh, but anyway, he's everywhere. And Mother smiles and says, yes, uh, omnipresent. He is everywhere. So if God is, if God can be everywhere, he's so big that he is everywhere, and he's inside of me, wouldn't he, like, stick out somewhere? And she says, yes, just like this song says. If you have Jesus in your heart, people should know it by looking at your face. Impartiality is something I think that we are going to struggle with until we are no longer wrapped in flesh. And it's amazing how we, we can see these things, and you don't see them unless you're looking for them. If you're not looking for things that need to be removed from your life, it's going to be few and far between of things that you actively work on and pray over to remove from your life. But when you start to look for them, it's amazing how God will reveal even the tiny little specks that need to be removed, not for others to see, but for you to remove because what will come out of you is what's stored up on the inside. We need 
to take God's word and view ourselves through it. I shared uh, this last week, I shared a, a song with my kids. It's, I didn't realize how old it was until I looked it up on YouTube. Um, but there was a, uh, a Christian artist that came out 12 years ago with a song called Love Glasses. Uh, matter of fact, it was one of Miriam's favorite artists, Becca Shea. And uh, if you if you like, um, I was gonna say hip. I guess it is hip hop. If you like hip hop, look look this song up on YouTube. It's called Love Glasses. If you don't like hip hop, um, just mute it and just listen to the words, or read the words on the, on the screen. Uh, but I I kind of enjoy that type of music, so it was fun to watch them look and watch this because it was about partiality. It was about the world looking at people in different ways. And at the very end, uh, they go to this concert where she's singing, and as everybody walks in, they're handing out glasses in the shape of hearts. And the whole message was, look at others through God's lenses of love. And we need to turn that upon ourselves as to too, because there's things that we need to remove, and we're not going to see them unless we're honest and look at our actions and our heart through the lens of God's love. Amen? Amen. So partiality, God doesn't, God doesn't show favoritism. As a matter of fact, God sent his son with absolutely no physical traits that would attract us to him. And he did it on purpose because partiality is ungodly. Showing favoritism is ungodly. We need to remove, the, remove those things from our lives so that we can display his love in our thoughts, in our actions, and in our demeanor. And I threw that one in there at the last minute because Elena and I say it all the time. Uh, I don't remember where we heard it from, but if you're happy to follow Jesus, tell your face. Because sometimes our face doesn't show that we're happy. Sometimes our face doesn't show that we are thankful for what God has given us. And that we get an opportunity to do what we get to do. Uh, so your demeanor, the way other people view us, is important. We should be displaying God's love even through our face. Amen? Amen. If you would, let's close in prayer with me. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for what you are doing in our hearts. I thank you, Father God, that you continue to pour into us. And Father, I know that for me, this was such a message that I, I honestly, the first time that I read through it preparing for this morning, that I, I did not see that partiality is really that big of a problem for me. And I pray, Father, that everyone that hears this message, that they would be convicted as well, at least to pray over it and say, God, is there something that I need to work on? Because, Father, we want what comes out of us to be you, to be of you, to be godly and righteous and holy, and there's only one way for that to happen. There's only one way for that to happen, and that's if you are put in. You can't come out unless you're put in. So, Father, help us to put in your word, put in your love, put in your Holy Spirit into every part of our lives, not just certain sections. But, Father, I pray that every part of us, every part of us would bring you glory and honor and, Father, that you would be 
that you would be proud of the men and women of God that we are becoming. Help us, Lord, to put that into practice, that we would be men and women of God who are not ashamed to correct even ourselves and certainly not ashamed to receive correction from others. I pray, Father, that you would bless our day, that you would bless our week. I pray for all of those that are sick, that aren't here this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would touch them and heal them. And we pray, Father, for good reports. Give us, Father, favor in this community as we go out and live a life that reflects you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen.